While Aurora HDR is a fully capable standalone piece of software, it's also available to run as a plugin. This means that you can integrate it into your existing photography workflow. Let's start by taking a look at it being used from Lightroom. I've got a series of images here, and I'm just going to drag them on Lightroom for a quick import. There we go. And I'll just click the import button to add them in. Now, what you'll see is that the images are added into your library. There's a few ways to run a plugin in Lightroom. If you're running it on a single image, a lot of people will choose Photo, Edit In, and you'll find Edit in Aurora HDR. The challenge here, though, is that this is actually going to run it one image at a time. Now, if you just have a single photo that you want to process, which does work well, you can use the Photo Edit In command. But if you've shot bracketed photos, I suggest you do it a little bit differently. With the images selected, what you can do is go to the File menu and choose Plugin Extras, Transfer to Aurora HDR 2019. Now what happens is it takes those images and sends them over. You see it gives the information about the files and it's reading the original RAW files. I'll now click Create HDR. Now in this case, you see that the handheld photo doesn't align properly. And it's important to note that this is evidenced by the slight halos and shifting. So let's close this image for a moment and switch back to Lightroom for a moment. And I'll try again, plug in extras, transfer to Aurora HDR. Now, I'll make sure the auto alignment option is checked before I click create HDR. And you'll see that it analyzes the image and attempts to align them properly to accommodate for things. Now, if an image isn't properly shot from a tripod and it's slightly misaligned, the resulting image will be a little bit smaller than the originals. That's because as the images have to shift and line up, you're going to have areas where there's gaps at the edges, so it is going to crop a little smaller. All right, you can see now that it's perfectly aligned, so it really did a nice job there. What I'm going to do is bring up presets for a moment, or looks, and just choose a new collection. Let's try the artistic category here and explore some of the options. Golden Hour, I like that. High con, ice cold, and you see a wide range. Muddy, a nice rich sepia tone. Let's try dramatic for a moment and just look at some of the options. We have a very warm one with glows or a little bit simpler. I like that. Using my HDR basic controls, I'll adjust the smart tone and that really helps bring out the details in the tire and then recover the highlights just a little bit for the scene. That looks good. From the color section, we'll add a little more color contrast. I like it. And let's finish this out with the vignette controls at the bottom here. I could place the center of the vignette, and if you're using Windows, you might have to adjust that with sliders. And now what I could do is adjust the size and amount of vignette to darken it down. There we go. I like that. And a little bit of feather. And you can see that the vignette just guides the viewer's eye into the subject. All right, let's take a look. There's the before, what one image looks like, and the after. And you see that it's able to bring out all the texture and depth in the scene. It looks great. Now this particular scene, I went with a more traditional HDR look, so it has a little bit more grunge and depth to it but you can control that by just using the HDR Enhance controls. If you think there's too much detail, just tone down clarity, or actually move the microstructure to a negative amount, and you'll see that it starts to smooth things over for a more photorealistic image. Let's back that off. And now it has depth from contrast and tone, but not a lot of texture that looks like an overly processed HDR. There's the before and the after. When we're all done, we can save the file, and it's going to ask me to store the file in a new location. I'll save that out to my desktop.
Now, saving this made sure that I captured a native project file. That's important in case I want to go back and modify it in the future. But when I click Apply, it's going to also generate a high quality TIFF. You'll see that it takes a moment to process and then returns it to Lightroom. Now, you'll notice in the library, we have a new image. Here are the raw files and included is a high quality TIFF. You'll notice that the pixel dimensions are slightly smaller and that's because it had to align the edges so it cropped in a little bit, but not much. And this particular image has all of the benefits of the merged HDR file and it's automatically re-added into the Lightroom library.